This is The Freak Zone with me, Stuart McConey. Mike Patton, you'll know from world-famous band Faith No More, but also maybe the Dillinger Escape Plan, Tomahawk, and Mr Bungle. He's a hugely versatile vocalist. Well, he's collaborated once more with the Norwegian soundtrack composer John Carter, their second joint release, following on from Romances of 2004. Exploring the love of film music and Carter's harmonically dense orchestration, the album also features the Stavanger Symphony Orchestra. Bacteria Cult is released on the 1st of April on Epicac Recordings. We caught up with Mike and John earlier in the week. This is John Cater uh, talking from Paris, and uh, I'm in a conversation with Mike Patton in Los Angeles at the moment. Hi, John. Hi, Mike. So I was thinking back on how it all started when I was doing support for you guys with Tomahawk. And we traveled mm. around and I, I played some stuff for you. And, um, you know, mm. a, few de- a few days later, you had done some vocals and, and we kind of went from there. So, suddenly we had a, an album called Romances on our hands. For me, discovering your music started, I believe, through Chloroform. Yeah. And then also your like amazing solo record, the Thank You For Giving Me Your Valuable Time. That record really like, it made me think, oh, at some point I can see what this guy sees. Make me the woman That's so sweet of you That's so sweet of you, yeah You couldn't tell what was a sample, what was recreated. Everything was done like with meticulous precision and uber maniacal attention to detail i immediately gravitated towards that i just love that because hell i wanted to make a record like that and i you know i couldn't i I didn't do it i think that this whole keta pattern musical direction started by me sniffing into you know, some old classical music stuff. I like to improvise and I like to compose, but I'm not that into jazz, uh, actually. So mm-hmm. I, I, I often mm-hmm. end up improvising over another tone lan- language. Instead of doing stuff from the real book or that kind of stuff, I kind of like to improvise and play around, <laughs> <laughs> play around no, other no, stuff. No, 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 no you know, that. so... <laughs> and it really opens up uh, lots of possibilities when you start to improvise over Chopin or, or Liszt or those kind of people. That's actually something that I've done all my life. We haven't been in the same room in, what, 10 years? Uh, probably. I don't know. <laughs> no, two, yeah, I guess 2007 was the last time, but... Yeah, no, you know, in this internet age, it's it's not a big problem, actually. Sometimes, man, you know, you think you're, like, pushing your limits. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, number one, there ain't no limits. And number two, it's like, I've already kind of done this before, in a way. So I'm comfortable. And I think in this case, you know, John has been working on a lot of film music. Full orchestrated stuff. And, you know, he sent me some of these tracks and thought they needed vocals. And I... I wasn't sure they did, I'll be honest. Yeah, but now you're all over the place, and I'm really glad that you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but when I now listen on the, you know, the first demos and the stuff that we started up on, I find it so much boring than where we ended <laughs> up. <laughs> you know? so, I mean, I didn't think that, but I'm glad you say that. What Mike and I have in common is that we always seek out uh, new sounds and, and new possibilities. And, you know, we used the orchestra, of course, but but the orchestra was treated pretty disrespectfully, I would say. I mean, we sometimes <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the orchestra went through a, an amp maybe afterwards or, or they didn't play like they used to. 
on top of that we did like a hundred tracks with uh, different stuff and w- whatever we had in a closet and of course mike added on uh, lots of vocal tracks that sounds kind of like instruments his vocal were treated in different ways in the same way as those orchestra lots of sp- spring reverb we love that absolutely. several sev- absolutely several times through the same spring reverb sometimes it's the secret weapon on this uh, record yes it is I think maybe the most surprising thing that is that we actually got it all done. We both are very detail oriented. <laughs> so it was a lot of, you know, going back and forth and going There was. Yeah, there was. Small small details. I busted your ass quite a bit, right? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we do, everything anybody does, should be seen a million ways. And that's the one great thing about our way of working, Mm -hmm. is that we're proposing questions as opposed to providing answers. We're not in the pleasure business, in my opinion. Um, I feel like we're here to do other things. And that means maybe feel a little uncomfortable, maybe not understand something. And then that fires off something in your brain that makes you go, huh, what about this? Oh, that reminds me about this in my life. Or I've heard that sound before, but why is it in a classical context? Any type of thinking. Our world now is based on non-thinking. The thinking is done for us, at least in America. Um, (laughs) You know, you you turn on the TV, you you turn on the radio, you, you look outside and Man, you're being bombarded with, I should think this way, I should look this way. Mm -hmm. And really, as artists sort of on the fringe, if you want to say, our job is to fight that. After we started working on this album, I was also doing a film in France, and I had booked the orchestra for three days but I kind of realized that I only needed maybe two or probably just one so I saw that uh, you know hey I, I got an orchestra here which uh, we can use on the Keda pattern <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I just kept that extra day with them and uh, gave them a lot of new sheet music and um, you know they played through <laughs> Because, I mean, let's be honest, John, so you got paid to do this film score, and then you had a couple extra days because you're, you're good at what you do, and then you made them record all this other crazy shit. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Am I so, wrong? <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Let, let's not uh, talk too much about this, uh, because the okay, okay. Pre- producer can, uh, the, the French producers can, <laughs> can be listening. I've been poisoned by my job as a film composer, so it's, sometimes it sounds filmatic when I'm not trying to also. So I, I gotta get rid of that. <laughs> it's surprising how the instrumentation can color and make things interesting. I'm not sure if these melodies are uh, mm-hmm. that interesting, but I think what makes it inter- interesting is what we've done to it afterwards. It's a mixture of everything that ha- building blocks from the last 400 years of music history. Things start out a certain way and they end up a certain way. And only if you're open to that journey will they arrive where they need to be. Otherwise, you got a picture frame and you, you're working in that frame. And that's wonderful. But this collaboration is not that kind of art. It's like, hey, the frame could go right, left. It could be rectangular. It could be pool-shaped. It could be basically, I think, that why John and I get along so well artistically is because he lets me do what I feel, whether it's right or wrong. And a lot of time it's wrong. I mean, but I figure it out after a period of time. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. And, you know, and another thing that I'm, th I'm sitting here thinking about is that you got to do everything with confidence, even though you're not sure of where it's going. I mean, sure. You have to be convinced of what you're doing, even if you know it's completely, you're going off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. That's the main basis yeah. of uh, all good art. Yeah. yeah. Die confidently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>